Deborah here. In this video I wanted to talk to you about something that I've been meaning to do a video about for a while now, but I've been putting it off for a good while because I wanted to have all the information available to me before I start speaking to you. It's about recovering from a cult, specifically the Jehovah's Witnesses, but this video will be helpful, I hope, to people who have been in other cults. Um, specifically, how do you recover when you leave a cult? How do you manage in the real world? There's a few things that people have to deal with when they leave a cult. Um, things that many psychiatrists and um, therapists, although they may try, may not understand because they've never been in a cult, they've never been uh, indoctrinated before in a high control group. Um, these are things I wanted to talk to you about. Ten things that I think will help you. Um, I was fortunate enough when I left the Jehovah's Witnesses to adjust reasonably well. Um, the reasons for that were many. Uh, they had to do also with the fact that when I was a Jehovah's Witness near the end, I woke up gradually. I didn't just suddenly wake up and find myself outside. I wasn't suddenly just fellowshipped in a world I didn't know. I gradually woke up from it. Okay, the first thing you need to understand, number one, you are not broken. Understand this, when you were in a cult, or any high control group, or even an abusive relationship with a person or any group, the reason they got to control you is because they made you think that you were broken, or unworthy, or there were things you needed to do to become acceptable. Now that's not true. You are not broken. You're not broken. In fact, I would go as far as to say that you are perfect the way you are. That's something that I believe. I believe that we're all different. We all have our own foibles and quirks and things, but we are perfect in ourselves. And what is important to do, I think, is to accept yourself. Um, a good idea, I think, if you've left the Jehovah's Witnesses or any um, organised religion or organised group, I would suggest for the first three months at least is to take a break from any kind of religion, take a break from any kind of um, um, church, anything like that. I would take this time to study for yourself whatever you want. It could be the Bible, the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, the Book of the Dead. It could be atheist literature. It could be anything. Study art, history, science, mathematics, anything. Just study and find and discover who you really are. Because another thing is, when you wake up out of a cult, you don't know who you are. You don't know. I didn't know who I was when I first left. I didn't know what I liked and what I didn't like. I didn't even know if I was a homosexual, heterosexual, bisexual. How do I know? I've been told what I am. Now, frankly, I do know exactly what I am. Uh, but you should just look at yourself and accept yourself as the way you are. And if you want to change anything about yourself, that's fine. You can do that, as long as it's what you want to do. Don't do it because somebody told you to or because someone said if you do this you will then suddenly become acceptable. That's not how it works. It's also worth remembering is if it's a religion, now I'm an atheist but I'm not going to diss on religion. I don't have a problem with religion unless it causes pain or hardship to people. Then I do have a problem. But in general I don't have a problem with religious belief. A religious belief or a, or a um, spiritual belief is there, supposedly, to help you, to make you feel refreshed, to help you feel better. If you're feeling down, you want to change something about yourself, and you, look, you have a, a spiritual side that you go down, it's meant to help you feel better and refreshed. It's meant to help you. If this group or religion or something makes you feel worse, so it makes you feel not worthy, or makes you feel like you need to pay money, or you need to do it a lot of time, or you need to shun certain people, or you need to break up members of your family or, or anything like that, then start asking questions. They should be red flags to you, okay? A religion should be there to help you. And also a religion uh, is a very spiritual, it's a, it's a spiritual thing, it's a very personal thing. This is a particular problem for Jehovah's Witnesses because when, when I was a Jehovah's Witness myself, there was me and there was God, who I believe was called Jehovah, but in the middle of God and me, there was Jesus. And in the middle of Jesus and me was the governing body, or the Watchtower Society. So rather than approaching God directly for me, I was approaching the Watchtower Society, who would approach Jesus, who would approach God. Now that's not the way it should work. So this whole idea of there being a middleman to approach God or approach some higher power, that is the first sign that 
you're involved with something that isn't quite right. Why would you need somebody to mediate from you to the person who created you? Why is that? Well, most likely they tell you it's because that you're unworthy in some way, that you need somebody better than you or somebody perfect to approach this God or somebody on your behalf. So understand first that a lot of people, a lot of groups and people who want to control you will tell you that you're broken, will tell you that you're unworthy, and they do that because they want to control you, okay? So as soon as you can realize that you're not broken, you're not weak, you're not unworthy, and if you can accept yourself the way you are and be happy with that, then you'll, you'll see a massive changes. It'll be easy for you. Number two, love yourself. This is important. A lot of people, if you say that you love yourself, get the wrong idea. They think that you're vain. Now, that's not what I mean. What I mean is, when I say love yourself, I mean notice things about you, be self-critical, and notice things about you that you like. Okay? You, if you have children, then I bet you're a good parent. Maybe you're self-critical and self, you know, look at yourself and you think that you're not all that great, but you are. And there's people out there who think that you are wonderful. I bet your children think you're wonderful. I bet your parents think that you are. Um, now, unfortunately, for Jehovah's Witnesses, for example, sometimes our parents or our children are shunning us. But understand that they're shunning us because they're controlled. Okay? Look at yourself and love yourself. There are things about you that I guarantee if I met you, I would love. I could find things that I'd like about you. And if you are going through a time where you, you can't find anything about yourself that you like, if you think that you really are worthless, well... Again, understand that that's just your opinion of yourself. If you meet other people, right, your best friends or people who do actually care about you, they'll tell you things about yourself that you probably don't even notice about yourself. Things that you probably overlook. And it's surprising sometimes because, you know, we don't go around telling each other how wonderful each other are. We don't do that because it's just weird, right? But deep down, there's, there's things that, we, that I like about certain people that I don't tell them. But if I did tell them, it'd probably make their day. And there's things about you that people like about you. And they love about you. So there are things about you that are worth loving. So love yourself. And if you have trouble with this, then by all means, seek like therapy or read some self-help books to help you understand that you are worthy the way you are. Number three, it's okay to not know. What do I mean by this? Well, you know when, um, if you were Jehovah's Witness, remember when you had questions and there was always an answer. Very rarely was there no answer for the question you had. But the problem was, the answer you were given was supposed to be accepted without question. Now, in the real world, it's okay to not know something. Maybe there's things that you'll never know, but that's okay. In the meantime, there's scientists and professors and mathematicians working out things now, and we're discovering more and more things every day. And there's things about yourself and your family and your friends that you don't know, but you'll find out eventually, or maybe you won't find out eventually. It's not a big deal. It's okay to not know something, but it would be wrong if we, if we don't know something and so we automatically just accept any explanation and insert it there and think that that's the truth. Because the truth is, we don't always know the truth. We don't always know. And it's okay to not know. And you know what? I think that's actually refreshing not knowing everything. It's refreshing to not know what someone thinks or why something is the way it is. And there could be a million different stories explaining why that is, but it doesn't mean that any of them are true. It's okay to not know. And sometimes... It's this obsession with needing to have an answer for something that makes people rush into different belief systems. Belief systems that just sometimes don't make sense, but they accept it because it gives them an answer. See, our brains are wired in a certain way where we don't like uncertainty. We don't like inconsistency. We like to have an answer for things. And that's understandable, isn't it? So, we have a, we have a question. We don't know the answer. We approach the Watchtower Society with this question and they'll give you an answer. But that answer could change. That answer could change with new light, as they call it, or progressive revelation or something like that. So it's okay to not know. Number four. Understand that the world is a wonderful place. Yes, I just said that. The world is a wonderful place. Yes, we do have poverty, death, destruction, disease, famine, corruption. Yes, those things do exist. But that's not what the world is completely. There's also beauty, there's music, there's laughter, there's joy, there's love, there's happiness, there's waterfalls and trees and birds and bees and everything that's so wonderful. 
the world is a mixture of all different things going on at the same time, right? Now you can look at it and you can look at negative things and focus on those negative things and you can think that the world is like that, which is precisely what Jehovah's Witnesses do. And they do that to make you see the world as terrible so that you'll run to safety in some kind of group, which would be their group. But the world's not, da- not all that bad, it's not all that dangerous. And if you can understand that the world isn't evil, the world isn't all bad, Bad things happen, sure, but the world itself isn't anything. It isn't all good or isn't all bad, but it can be wonderful if you make it wonderful. And if you look at it and you focus on things that make you happy and you focus on things that you love and enjoy about it. So the world isn't evil, remember that. Number five, if something isn't contributing to your life, eliminate it. I don't care if it's a negative belief, a negative thought, a negative person, a negative food, a negative habit anything if it's not contributing to you and your happiness get rid of it because you don't need negativity in your life i myself went through a period where i just stopped hanging around with people who i thought were idiots stopped hanging around people who were negative and complaining all the time and i specifically chose people who i thought were positive people who had a positive outlook and i i focused on these people and i hung around these people and my life changed for the better i became a more positive person And you'll probably find that when you were in a high control religion, such as the Jehovah's Witnesses, there was a lot of negativity floating around. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses will say they're the happiest people on earth, but that's just not true. I know for the fact that's not true. I don't know what your experience is. But there's a lot of negativity floating around, especially in the Watchtower magazines and the literature. A lot of talk about death and destruction and disease and famine. And they focus on these things to make it look like you need something better and that to make you afraid and to make you run to their group. So that's number five, eliminate negativity from your life. A good idea is if you go to the library or go on Amazon or something and look for books to to read, to become more positive and to focus on positive psychology. Positive psychology, that's a good subject. You research that. Some excellent books out there for that kind of thing. Number six, do something. When you were Jehovah's Witness, you spent about six hours a week doing Jehovah's Witness things. You were studying the magazines or literature, you were at meetings, you were knocking on doors, you were studying for the next meeting. Now all those things are behind you, you don't have to do them anymore. Now, you devoted six hours a week doing something that was rather boring. What could you have done instead? Well, with all this time you have now, you can devote that time to learning a language, to learning a new skill, to start studying a degree. That's six hours that you got free. So do something. Time is the most precious thing that you have, and you have more of it now, and more of it to devote on things that you want to do. So put down the gossip magazine, turn off the trash TV, and do something positive and do something productive that's going to benefit you. Because that time you spent with the Jehovah's Witnesses and studying and worrying about the end of the world, you can spend that time to do something beneficial and positive. And that's time you can use to better yourself. So instead of doing all that time to the Watchtower Society, donate that time to you and make yourself better. Even if you want to go out and meet new people, or you go out with your friends, that's something good you can do as well. Use that time that you wasted previously and do something positive, do something. Number seven, stand your ground. What I mean by this is, um, if you're an extra Jehovah's Witness, particularly if you're disfellowshipped, you'll find yourself probably shunned by every Jehovah's Witness that you know, more than likely including family. Now. The Jehovah's Witnesses get by on control. The governor body control the congregations through the elders, and the elders control the congregation. And each other member controls each other by the idea that they much snitch on each other. They report each other to the elders if they think somebody's done something wrong. Now that that's all gone, because you're not a Jehovah's Witness, these people can't do a thing to you. And that's a wonderful thing, because if you see a Jehovah's Witness in the street, they expect you to cross the road. They expect you to feel ashamed to put your head down and walk past. But you don't have to do that. You're not the one in a high control group. You're not the one in a cult. You don't follow watchtower rules. You do what you want to do. So let them be the ones to cross the road. Let them be the ones to get flustered when they meet you. And what I do personally is if I see a Jehovah's Witness that I knew from my Jehovah's Witness days, I approach them and I be all happy and friendly. And I make them all awkward and walk away. I would love if they did speak to me, to be honest with you, because I don't really wish them any harm. But let them be the ones to feel embarrassed and ashamed because they expect you to be. So stand your ground. Don't apologise for what you are. Don't apologise for being an ex-Jehovah's Witness. Why would you? Stand your ground. 
Number eight, understand that the world is full of good people. You know what? A lot of people in the real world have never been in a cult. And when they meet somebody who has been in a cult, they're interested. They want to talk to you. They have about a million questions. And this is something that I exploit, actually. Because when I meet new people, um, I don't I'll, like, tell them that I've been a Jehovah's Witness and I was in a cult. But when the subject comes up about family, um, I tell them that I have no family. And they ask why. And I explain the fact that I was in a high control group before. And people are fascinated. And people are very um, understanding. And they, and they, they think it's, it's really interesting. Understand that there's great, there's great people out there. All you've got to do is go out and meet them. So it really is a good idea to put yourself out there. Don't stay at home. I know it's tempting sometimes to stay at home, but don't do that. Go out, go out and meet people. And if you find it difficult to meet people, what, what I would suggest that you do, um, you can join online forums, for example. JehovahsWitness.com is a good idea for a forum. Um, or um, there's a website in the UK. I don't know whether they have it abroad. It's called meetup.com. And basically their groups... Um, for like whatever subject you're interested to do, it could be like French or German or Spanish or cooking or flower arranging or whatever. And there's people who organize groups where these people meet up and do things. And I joined a group on there um, for international, you know, expats and things because I speak different languages and I like to meet people. And I joined that and I made lots of friends through there. You can make friends doing that. Look for whatever hobbies are in your area, any classes, like art classes. I joined an art class as well, photography classes. And you can meet people who have the same interests as you. And that's a good way of making friends. So go out there and meet people and be positive. And you know what? It's not as difficult as you think. It's actually very easy if you have, if you have enthusiasm and you have approachability and you, know, you just accept people where they are. People are very welcome. And there's some wonderful people in this world. So go out and meet them. Number nine. Understand that from here, things get better. I know things might look bleak right now, especially if you've just left the Jehovah's Witnesses and especially if you're being shunned by your family. I understand how bad that is, but understand that things get better from here. They really do. There are people out there, if you're being shunned and you have nobody, there are people out there who will help you. Right? I'm one of them. Okay? If, you, if you message me on the Jehovah's Witness forum, for example, my name's Pale Emperor on there, um, I will help you. Or the Jehovah's Witnesses, extra Jehovah's Witnesses on there will help you too. We all want to help each other. You're not on your own. Things get better from here. There's a side to you that you probably don't even know. There's things that you probably don't even know that you like yet. But you'll, meet, you'll discover these things about yourself. Um, I look back in the last um, two and a half years since I left, and I've had the best time of my life. The best time of my life. Because I did things that I always wanted to do that I was, I was never allowed to do. And the way to get over all of, all of this, the way to, to go over the sadness is accept the fact that, okay, your family are shunning you. And that's not nice. It's horrible. But they might leave. The family might leave the religion. Since I left, uh, my brother left the religion. Um, maybe my sisters will leave. Maybe my mum will leave. Maybe. I don't know. But also remember that if you're out, if you're outside the religion, if you're outside the cult, you can be somebody who can support other people who leave. A year from now, more people will leave and they'll reach out for people who've been left and ask for them for help and advice. And you can be one of those people who can help them. You could help your brother or sister when they leave or your mum or dad or your, or your children. They'll need somebody and you can be that person. And do you know what the funny thing is? We may not be able to change the world, but we'll have the opportunity to change somebody's world. And that's important to remember because if you think about... Um, whenever you make somebody laugh, for example, if you cheer somebody up, you did that. You did that. And you can do that again and again and again and again. And you can change somebody's life. You can change somebody's world. You can make them happier. You can help them adjust to the real world. So don't ever, ever underestimate yourself. Number 10. And this is probably the most important one. And if you're going to remember any of this video, I want you to remember this one. Understand right now that the world is a better place with you in it. There is. The world is a better place with you in it. Unfortunately, there are some people who leave cults and high control groups and they take their own lives. Um, whatever reason that is, maybe they feel they can't cope, maybe they think they're, they're not getting support or they have no choices. But you know what? The world is a better place with you in it. One day, we're all going to die. I'm going to die, you're going to die, your friends are going to die. Everyone you know and everyone you've met eventually will die. 
And that's a sad truth. So one day we will all die anyway. Okay? But in the meantime, live your life. Live your life and enjoy it. And if you're not enjoying your life, reach out to other people. Tell them how you feel. And if you're not enjoying your life, by all means, go and get therapy. Or look at books and self-help books. Find things you're interested in and pursue hobbies and interests. Because things are never as bad as they seem. I mean, I've myself, and at previous times in my life, especially when I was a Jehovah's Witness, I've contemplated suicide. Um, and the best advice I had when I felt suicidal was that, um, give it a week. See how you feel by next week. And you know what? A week later, the problem I had, or the thought I had, was that gone. So, understand the world's a better place with you in it. And I guarantee if I spoke to you that I would like you. I would. I'd find things out about you that I would like. And always have things to look forward to. Because the world, the world is a good place and things will get better from here. I promise you they will. And if you find things hard, by all means, if you're an ex-Jehovah's Witness, for example, go and find the jehovahswitness.com forum, post on there, many people will help you. If you're an ex-Scientologist, find an ex-Scientology forum, and so on and so on. Whoever you are, whatever you're doing, if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling like you need help, if you're feeling suicidal, go and get help. Seriously, do it. Because I really, I would love to meet you. I know I have a few followers on this channel. Um, that's not why I make the videos. I just do it because I, I really want to help other people. But if I met you guys, um, I would like you. I would find something about you that I like. And I would tell you that you are worth something. And you are worth loving. And things get better from here. Okay? I know this has been like a really soppy video. But I don't care. I'm making a video. It's my channel. Okay? So guys, if it, there's 10 things that I did to recover from a high control cult and I hope it's useful for you and have a good day. Pale Emperor over and out.